Jesus' name. Amen. Turn to a couple people in just time. I believe God's got something for you. I, I believe, I believe God has something, something for you, something that, that he wants to impart in you and something to, to transform uh, the way that you're going to, to experience him in your life. I, again, appreciate you being here today and experiencing um, spiritual family life together. Um, that it's great for us. Uh, if we're not careful, we, we rush in on Sunday mornings and we have church and then we, we rush out uh, real quick afterwards. And this gives us a time for us to uh, be able to experience some of these high points together in, in the church. And just a little bit of the children's church, um, they'll come over and they'll sit over in that section over there. So when they come in, don't be too distracted with them there because uh, we've got one of our um, uh, young guys uh, from children's ministry there that's going to get water baptized today. So we just want to bring the whole group over so that they can experience that spiritual family together with them also. So um, we're excited about those things. Are you excited today? Be in the house of the presence of the Lord and be able to see what God's done in lives and to be able to rejoice together. And we come together and, and oftentimes in situations like this, um, you know, if we're not careful, we just kind of go through a couple of quick scriptures and and, and we're not here to go through a, a doctrinal statement on, on water baptism. We're, we're not here just to lay out a couple reasons why um, we submerse. Um, but we're here to be able to be reminded uh, of what God's called us to do. The way he wants us to, to live life together. Um, to have these moments of, of public consecration and, and dedication um, with, with those around us. And to rejoice with those that do rejoice. It's a time also for us that have been water baptized to reflect and, 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 and to stop for a few moments and remember the day that I was baptized. Remember that day that I made a, a public declaration um, to others of the lordship of Jesus in my life. And it's a time for us to kind of stop and remind ourselves, am I living like I made the commitment in my life? But we're not here to, to put guilt and condemnation on us, but... Uh, but we do need to be reminded once in a while so that we can refocus on how we're living the rest of our life. Are we living the rest of our life out of our experience in Christ? Today with water baptism, it's, it's, it's not about joining a church. It, it's not about just uh, going through a formality or, or, or a tradition. It's not just about getting a, a certificate. It is about obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ. It is about obeying the word and whenever we obey the word acts of obedience always release divine blessings in our life don't know what it is but i know that every time i obey god god says your obedience is not so much a reward as it is just my love being poured out to you i love you and when we obey him we're saying we love you too it's an obedience in the example the the disciples gave to us and and the early church is given to us. The culturally things might change, but the word of God never changes. And there's something about water baptism. There's something about these public declarations of our faith. That it's not, a, 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 it's not just a tradition, but there's something that is spiritual that happens. And I'm glad that it is beyond just articulate speech. I'm glad that there's something that goes on in our lives individually... When we obey God from our heart, that changes us just a little bit more to be like him. And so today, if you would, you take your Bible out in, in, in Romans chapter 6. I want to look at just a couple of scriptures. We do have about seven people that are going to be water baptized here in just a, a few moments. And, and we're here to rejoice with them. And, and you might say, well, Pastor, I if I know it's water baptism, I would have stayed home today. No, this is when we want to get together and rejoice and see what God is doing. That you don't have to just hear a sermon today. You get to see the sermon. You get to see the message of Christ that is transforming lives. You get to see that young people, the next generation, you get to see adults that are making decisions and they're living out of this transformation of obedience to following after Jesus. And you see the power is not in the formula. The power is not in the water. The power is in obeying the word. And we all need to be obedient to the word in our life. The power of the supernatural, the power of something sacred, the power of something special when we simply are obedient to the word. Some of you say, well, what are the qualifications for baptism? 
I want you to know that in the scriptures that it gives us, a, a, we could say, at least three baptisms. There is the baptism into Christ when we, are, when we accept Jesus as our Savior, as our Lord. The qualification to be baptized into Christ is you must be spiritually dead. You, you must be lost. You must be in the need of Jesus the Savior. And you ask him to come and to, to be your Lord and Savior. Could you say Lord and Savior? It's, you know, it, it's like Siamese twins that cannot be separated. If we're not careful in our convenient Christianity, we want Jesus to be our Savior, but we don't want him to tell us how to live life. We want to do what's enjoyable to us. We want to do what's pleasing to us. We want, we want church to be all about me. We want what others do to me to be the main thing that, that makes a change. But we need to understand that Jesus is our Savior and our Lord. And you cannot separate that. And as we come in moments like this, we are reminded of his Lordship over our lives. What is the prerequisite for being baptized into Christ? And that is that you need to believe in Jesus for your Savior. And then say, I want him to be the Lord for the rest of my... I, I, I'm not just saying that, that I want him to dictate the way that I live. I want him to live through me. I, I'm not saying that he tells me what I can and cannot do. He tells me that now that we are united as one, now all things are possible to accomplish in your life. It, it's not him saying I can no longer have fun. It is saying now I've got joy unspeakable and full of glory available for you. It's not him saying you got to go to church on a regular basis. He's saying you can wake up every day with the joy of the Lord as your strength regardless of what you're facing in life. It is not a restriction. It is actually an opening up of all that he wants to accomplish and fulfill in your life and to flow through you. It's wonderful we're no longer living just for ourselves. Well, that's a small world, isn't it? When you're just living for me. But when you've got Christ, the hope of glory living through you, that's what transforms and changes your life. Here in Romans chapter 6, verses 3 through 11, the Apostle Paul is writing to Christians in Rome, and he's writing this, this amazing revelation, this, this, that, this, this, this understanding of this secret that he wants us to live out of. And he's starting in verse um, 3 of, of chapter 6, and he says, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ, there it is, that original baptism, the most important one, the, the most significant one. This is the one that gives us the, the privilege, the opportunity of not just going to heaven when we die, but to be able to experience heaven coming down into our lives where truly we can see when Jesus said, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And it starts in our lives and moves through our lives. Here he says that we are baptized into we are submersed into that there is a a oneness i'm not saying that this is any kind of a deep profound revelation for you but i thought it was certainly something of note i'd, I'd never really thought of before that he calls us to be symbolically to be water baptized a submersion and and yet the majority of our body is made up of what so, so the majority of us is made up of water and we go underwater and, and, and there's a, the water around us and there's, there's water in us. And, and he's saying that when we are baptized into Christ that, that he is in us and, 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 and yet we go into him. There's a, there's a submersion, a completion that he's in us and he's all around us. That, that he is with us, that he consumes the majority of There's still a little bit of you left in there. Just like you're the majority of you is water, but there's a little bit of that other stuff that's there. When we are filled with Christ on the inside of us, you still have a personality. You still have a choice. You still have a mind. You still have emotions. But they're supposed to all be influenced by the one. The one. The one with the big zero or big O of zero. Big O in front of it. The, the O-N-E. The one who fills us and consumes us. Paul says, all of us, all of us, not just us apostles, not just us holy ones, not just a few of us, but the moment we were born again, remember at Cornelius' household when they seen them, the power of the Holy Spirit coming upon them, and they said, who can forbid them from, from, from being water baptized? Immediately after they experienced the power of salvation in their lives, you don't have to get holy to get water baptized, you just get Jesus, and then we get water baptized. All of us. 
All of us have been baptized into Christ. We're baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism and in death in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. If, if you have a Bible that you can, underline or highlight or write that down. We get baptized into Christ. We receive salvation in our life. And, and again, I know today we're talking about water baptism, but there is no significance in water baptism without this baptism without having Christ coming into our lives, without us being submersed into Christ, into our lifestyle, then there is, the only thing that happens is you get wet and confused if you get water baptized without Christ in your life. But here he is saying, this is the amazing thing, when you get baptized into Christ, spiritually coming alive in him, spiritually realizing that we died together with him in the sense that he took our sins, and we experienced his, his resurrection power, it's so we can walk in newness of life when... Now, we get to walk in newness of life when? Do I have to wait until I get to heaven and shout on them streets of glory? No, we get to walk in newness of life now. Do I have to wait until I've come to church for 40 years and get a special promotion pin? No, we get to walk in newness of life the moment we accept Jesus in our lives. What is this newness of life that he's talking about? It's a whole new way of living. It's a new way of seeing. Resurrection power is alive on the inside of me. It consumes me. It influences me. I'm no longer the old Dennis living for my old ways. I now have Christ alive on the inside of me. And now he, he is at work in me. And he shows himself through me. He works through me. I'm a partner with him in what he wants to do. He has majority rule over my life. I willingly submit it to him. Why? Because without him, we wouldn't have life. Listen to this. It goes on here. And so we can walk in this newness of life right now. Verse 5, it says, For if, if we have been united with him in death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in resurrection like his. Verse 6, we know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we, we may no longer be a slave to sin. Folks, you don't have to wait. We don't have to wait till we get to heaven to be free from the power of sin in our lives. Isn't that good news? Sin no longer controls us. I know that you're the righteous and the holy ones here today, but, 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 but think back years ago, years, I mean years ago, when maybe there was a habit or a sin that controlled your life. Can any of you think that far back? Can you go back that far? And, and maybe it wasn't one of the, the terrible six, or maybe it wasn't something of, of, uh, uh, that was even illegal, but it was something, something like hatred, unforgiveness, jealousy, pride, arrogance. Maybe it was some of those things that, that are socially even acceptable and, and, and that thing controlled your life. It, it, was, it was like a, a, a noose around your neck. It was that, that bridle that was in your mouth. But Jesus came and he said, you, you can live a new way of life. You can be free from that thing. And when you accepted the lordship of Jesus, he liberated you from that thing. And it was so much better. That's the new life that's available for us. That's what Jesus wants us living out of that's, that 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 that. That sin no longer controls us and makes us, drives us. We're set free in our lives. Well, he did this for us, every one of us. Verse 7 says, for, for one who has died has been set free from sin. How, now, now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. Uh, we know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion. I think it's an interesting word that he's pulled out there, that death no longer has dominion over him. And, it, and if we're in him, then dominion no longer or death no longer has dominion over us. In the sense, well, pastor, aren't you going to physically die someday? Yes, physically someday, but real death. That death that controls a man and a woman after this life. That death that is even prevalent with us. If you don't know Jesus, you may be breathing, but your spirit has no life, no, no power, no freedom on the inside. But we've been delivered and we have been set free right now in our lives. Dominion has been broken, verse 10. For death 
For he that, that died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider your life dead to sin and alive unto, in Christ. And it's alive to God in Christ Jesus. Folks, this is what we must understand. No, I know it's just that we have freedom from sin, but we have freedom for a purpose. We have freedom for a purpose. Our freedom for the purpose is not just for you to live free and however you want to live, but now my life is owed to God in the way he wants me to live it. And now I want to live a life that is not just do's and don'ts, but what does he want to do and how he wants to transform and change the world that is around. God wants to use you. Isn't that an incredible thought? That almighty God wants to, to demonstrate his goodness and his greatness through your life. He wants us to understand that sin no longer has control over us. And we have shifted the dominion of sin. Now it's been broken. And now I have shifted over to the lordship of God. And what he wants to do in my life. Not that he makes me do things, but now he gives me the potential. He gives me the opportunity, he gives me the responsibility of choice along the way. So now that we are baptized into Christ, this, this, this spiritual event that goes on, this, this amazing revelation that happens in our life, we now have the privilege and the opportunity to live out of that. We're building to the symbolism of water baptism because if we just talk about water, we miss the whole purpose, the Christ in us, the Turn with me quickly to Colossians chapter 1, another empowering verse here. Colossians chapter 1, verses 26 through 28. This is, is one of the most powerful divine mysteries of the New Testament right here. This is one of the most amazing, incomprehensible with the brain truths that are revealed to us that, that, that Paul says over and over that has to be revealed to us by the Spirit in our spirit. It's not crazy. It's not wacky. It's just beyond comprehension. It's just the, the, the thought of it just doesn't even enter into the natural mind. Paul said it this way in, in, to the church when he was talking in 1 Corinthians. He says, I have not seen and nor his ear heard the things that God has prepared for them that love him. And we might think, well, does that mean new cars, new houses, and all those kinds of things? I, I want you to know that what it means more than anything is that God Almighty wants to come and live on the inside of us. Would you agree that's better than a new car? Would you agree that that's better than a new house? Would you agree with better than being the single winner of the lottery a couple of weeks ago? I didn't get any yeses on that one, but yes. We have heard these things with our minds so much that they have become, they have become almost, we've lost the impact of them. We, we hear it with our understanding, but we need the Holy Spirit to bring them alive to us, ever increasing in our lives. Listen to this divine mystery that has been revealed to us that, that takes us from, just, from just, just some kind of religious confirmation to spiritual transformation. Because folks, that's where we're heading. That's where every one of us need to be going, is spiritual transformation in our lives. As, as good as you are and as far along as you have gone, there, there's more to be transformed into as we follow after Christ and obedience in our life. Listen to the power of this scripture. The apostle Paul says, the mystery hidden from ages and generations, but now is revealed to the saints, God's people. Doesn't that perk you up just a little bit? I know you probably can quote this verse, but stop and think for a few moments. If someone would tell you that we just came across something that has been hidden for ages, something that, that, that's going to answer the big question, why? Why did Jesus come? Why did Jesus have to die? Why do I need to, to accept Christ in my life? Why do I need this? this baptism into Christ? Why, why do I need to accept Jesus as, why? This answers the big question. This gives us, gives us the foundation to the way we're going to live this newness of life that he's called us. This keeps us from just being religious people. This keeps us from just, just going through formalities and just trying to be good. This gives us divine hope in our life. Listen to it. I'm sure you've already read ahead, but listen, verse 27. To them God chose to make known 
how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery. Here it is, here it is, here's the mystery, which is Christ in you. How do you get God and put him in Dennis Wingirder? How do you get all of this it in this. You can't put something bigger in something smaller, but he does. He puts Christ in you, the hope of glory. You know that verse. You can quote that verse. Are we living this verse? I don't say that in any sense of condemnation and guilt. I'm just saying release the potential of what's in your life. Are we living in this newness of life? Are we living like we have Christ on the inside of us? Are we living like he's our Savior and our Lord and the way he's working through us? This this is a divine mystery. One of the greatest mysteries of the New Testament have Almighty God not only would say, I'm going to forgive your sin, that would not only say, I'm going to make for a place for you in heaven, but he said, I can't wait. I want to put my spirit on the inside of you right now. With your mistakes, with your hang-ups, with your challenges, with your problems, with your situations, I'm going to come. I want to come. I want to be with you. I want to be in every single one of you. So stop listening to your logic. Stop listening to just religiosity. Stop listening to the accusations of the adversary who says God doesn't love you and doesn't want to be a part of you. This is the mystery that we need to experience in our life. God in us, transforming us. He's not in there just hanging out until we get to heaven. He's there to to manifest the hope of glory through your life. He's not there just so that you can get to heaven when you die. He's there because he wants to demonstrate heaven while we're here on this earth. You, you are like the resurrected Lord Jesus walking this earth because you are containing him in you. That's why I say you don't understand what this with the mind, but the Holy Spirit starts to stir on the inside of you and you start to understand this is the potential that I now have. That as I walk around, that, that now I'm carrying on his mission. I'm starting to see with his potential. I'm starting to speak his words of life to those around me. I'm starting to, such as I have, give to the world that is in darkness and, and, dis, and, and is in need and, and needs help in their lives. And I start to live life different because it's not about me. It's about the one who now is in me. Newness of life. It's a privilege, it's an honor, it's an opportunity. It's amazing. Paul talked to this in, in, back in Romans when he said be baptized into Christ. Here in Colossians, he says that, we, that Christ, the hope of glory on the inside of us. He, he says it in Galatians 2.20, like we've been crucified with Christ, nevertheless we live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. I want you to know one of the most fulfilling and joyful lives that you will live. It's not when all of your prayers are answered, it's not when everybody likes you, it's not when everything is going good when you realize that you have this intimacy with Almighty God. Not just in a church building, but His presence on the inside of you. That wherever you go, He's right there with you. You don't have to wait for a feeling. You don't have to wait for someone to tell you. You have a knowing of His presence in your life. It's incredible to be able to know that now Christ is at work in us and through us and wants to accomplish His plan through us. God loves His people and wants to flow through them and demonstrate his goodness and his greatness in every single one of our lives. Stop right now. Because I know the majority of you in this room. Stop right now. I've been with you for years. And I want you to ask yourself that simple question right now. Am I living like Christ is living through me? Not in a sense of guilt or condemnation, as I said. I want it to be a sense of of opportunity, a sense of of potential, a sense of purpose that is released for you. This divine mystery has not been given to us to make us feel guilty every so often, but but to understand the potential of what Christ wants to do in every single one of our lives. The potential.
potential is there. The potential is there. The potential is there. This is not just you can do better. This is Christ wants to do amazing through you. So that the world can see just how good and how great of a God that he is. So when we receive this amazing unification where we come together in the Lord Jesus Christ, he, he dwells in us, then his power starts to flow through us, not just for us, but for the world that is around us, the world that needs Jesus in their lives. I want to encourage you that you continue to, to, to just focus on that, that, that one scripture this week, that you'll take that one verse and meditate on this week. Christ, the hope of glory, he's in me. Christ, the hope of glory, he's in me. What does that mean? Holy Spirit, show me daily how to release that potential, how to release your presence in my life. Show me if there's areas in my life that I'm not living up to the potential that I have in Christ Jesus so that I can do so. It's incredible. When we listen to his voice, what he'll even help us to avoid in life. You know, uh, just before service, I was talking with Aaron a little bit there, and he was, he was talking about it. Uh, one of the opportunities he had was, was getting ready for, for the potential, of course, of, of always going into active duty there and, and going into a, a live situation and where he has to be really in tune with what's going on. And he didn't realize they were necessarily using live ammo one day and uh, kind of stood up to see what was going on and a tracer went by and he realized real quickly the situation was serious. I think sometimes we don't realize how serious life is. Until a crisis zings by. And then we go, oh my gosh, I got to get right with God. I want you to know that God wants us to be right with him so he can use us because there's a lot of people around us that are having crisis in their life. Listen to me just a moment. We're going to switch, switch gears. There's a lot of people that are having crisis in their life. And God wants you to bring Christ into their life. Will you be that person? Will you be that one that will walk in newness of life so that others will see Christ in you, the hope of glory to the world that is around you? Water baptism is, is symbolic. It is a reminder of what Jesus has done for us. It has nothing to do with church enrollment. It has nothing to do with just a, a certain age that you're at. It is about realizing what Jesus has done for me and that now because my sins have been washed away and now because I have been raised up with resurrection life, my life belongs to him. And I want to make a public declaration of that, you know, uh, Jesus gives us these words in Mark 16, verses 15 and 16, where it talks about the, the, the water baptism isn't what saves us, but it, it was what, what reminds the world around us of the, the power of our testimony. In Mark 16, it says, and then he told them, go into all the world and preach the gospel uh, to everyone. And anyone who believes and is baptized shall be saved, but anyone who refuses to believe is condemned. That the, the believing is the important part, but when there's, when there's real believing on the inside of us, then there's real actions on the outside. And if I really believe on the inside that Jesus is my Savior and Lord, then I, I want to take action on the outside. And that action is not for my salvation. My action is so others can see who Jesus is and want to then be drawn. It's that power of transformation. God loves every single one of us. And yet there's something incredible that happens when we obey him. There's something exciting in the church family. And then and there's been, been, been much prayer for today. Not that, that there be so much a special there, but just a special within a us. A stirring. You know, at this point where we have uh, seemingly grandbabies on a regular basis, uh, you know, and once my family's excited about they have... I'm excited that my wife's not having children. I'm excited about that. But whenever there's a new birth, our family is excited. Our church family is excited. And so as people are water baptized today, we are excited about what the Lord is doing. And this is a time where we pause. This is a time where we, we reflect. This is a time where we rejoice with those that are rejoicing. This is a time where we... We pause and we remember the commitment that we made publicly. 
and we're living up to those past promises that we made to the Lord, this, this is probably a time where some of us need to rededicate our lives to the Lord and say, God, forgive me. Man, how did I get so far away? Holy Spirit, thank you for being so kind and gentle that you never left me, never, you never left me alone, that you're always, always working to draw me back to you. For some of us, it's a time where we're just amazed that this world has got our attention, had us drawn us away. This is a time for us to say, you know what? I need to refocus my future. Every day for the rest of my life belongs to Jesus. And to him be the glory. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your divine presence. Lord, we're not here just to have a, a, a religious experience, but we are here to be transformed and changed. Lord, we're here, though, that every single person in this room would experience the fullness of Christ, the hope of glory in our lives. Holy Spirit, we just depend upon you right now to work in us and through us. Not just the few that are being baptized, but in this church, may there be a fresh baptism of your fire. May there be a fresh baptism of your anointing, a fresh baptism of your purpose as we follow after you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence. In Jesus' name, amen.